is a haven in Townlands. You're only saying that you don't mean a word of it. Listen, oh, goodbye, I anyhow. Mean, that's it. <laughs> Drop it. Okay, now we're all we're saying goodbye to all the nice people of Brutustown. I feel very, very good about the whole thing. I've been here 35 years, and it's a big chunk of my life. I enjoyed it. It's a business now for the younger man, like one of those um, whiz kids or some of those yuppies. Call it Don's Deli or something. Okay, God bless. God bless. If you want to come down at five o'clock, there's a few. Right. Thank you very much for everything. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, enjoy your time. Now, at this stage of my life, I'm very interested in doing things, and then I find then that I'm tired. Now I'm working, you have to work, you 12 hours a day and it's seven days a week. Like I mean, I don't expect my wife at this stage of our life to just run the shop and let me run around and play the old gent, like. Listen, Annie, you? And you know it's our last day, don't you? And I know it's my last day, and uh, I must say I'm very sorry that they're leaving because they've here been here for 30, what years? 35, fellas, yeah. 35 years. And we never had an argument. Oh, we did. We plenty Only of rails. Only over the cast. <laughs> He's down for a dust. I was away. As I know, I've travelled all over the world. I was in everywhere, and I came back and. I was pottering about, see what I would do, would I get it? A normal, I'd love to, a respectable job, like, but anyhow, the shop just happened to come up. Through unfortunate circumstances, the previous owner had a little bit of trouble, and anyhow, I had uh, a few bob under the mattress, and we bought the shop. We bought the shop cheap for about 1,200 quid. And I said, I will just have it for it till I get myself a, a proper job. And it suddenly it, we developed it slightly, and then another ten. There were times were good in the groceries right in those days, and then we bought a place down below, and we did all right. I have had various occupations, but even I think you should do different things at different stages of your life. I always had ambitions, but I didn't really succeed. I wanted to be a a star footballer and I wanted to run a four minute mile and but I didn't just and I wanted to swim the channel but I didn't get around to any of it like because I wasn't good enough. And then the thing is when the time you're finished your day's work you were so tired you could do nothing like so I mean, the opportunity wasn't there as simple as that. Thank you very much. You. Okay. How are you doing? How are you yourself Philip? Oh yeah. I'm fine thank you. All Mr. well down below. Yeah. All well down below. Everybody's well. Yeah. Thank you very much. Oh these are all the swimmers is it? Hi Lena. <laughs> yeah, well, look, let's, show, let's see let's see how you swim quickly. It was always a very good reward shop, and we always had great fun talking to them all when we came up. None of them ever got ruffled over anything. And I'm going to miss it terrible. I mean, we could always run up here before closing time, and uh, we'd see uh, uh, he might be going, getting into the car, and he'd get out of the car and open up the shop. I, I think it was very good of him to do all those things. And it was great fun, and the shop was great, and they did everything in the shop. Thank you, Tom. <laughs> I am fully conscious that after seven days, no, I don't mean, I don't know anyway, hurt. I mean, I'm just amused, like. But after seven days off at this avenue, I would be completely forgotten because you'd have a new person here and a new thing. And I wouldn't expect those people to be thinking about me, like, because I mean to say, I'm merely the only. I mean, I'm just being a, a shopkeeper. That's what I've been. That's the part I played. I played it to the best of my ability, like. 
Now, th this is no reflection on the people of Bootherstown. Now, uh, these have been the most wonderful people over. Now, I mean, and I've quite a few have passed over as well. Like, but I have enjoyed, I must say, and I, the really nice people I have met. And I would always have happy memories, like. I'll put the gate for it. Thank you. Bye bye. Each residence, I think, Mr. Light, should have a deep freezer, you yes, see. Yes, he has that. And, and we purchase a little extra in bulk So every if there's an earthquake week. or anything, Mr. O'Callaghan can live for about five years without coming out of his house, <laughs> like. Is it five well, years? Long well, I have it behind my TV chair. Yeah? Like an ejector seat. An ejector seat. So, <laughs> and... Um, a 13 cubic foot, no one fridge wouldn't leave a craft with an ejector seat. <laughs> and he never goes out with women. He's as big as your account. No, no. no, he doesn't. He's not. I know. Society might fail, yeah. He doesn't. He's not interested <laughs> in women. Have to uh, yeah. They're too expensive. Yeah. What? <laughs> 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 find when I go to the 40 foot it's getting away from the hustle and the bustle and certainly the rocks and the sea and without being over dramatic but there's a certain spirituality about the place. Now that it was a start to the day, and if I got me a little plunge in the 40 foot and me little sit down for five minutes, a little meditation, I could cope for the rest of the day. I got this from a, in London, a shop called Mysteries. Yeah. Now, the thing is, I use it for, you know, for my football and forecasting sporting events. I'm improving almost now. I'm quite, I'm just getting slightly excited about it. Like, now, the only thing uh, I would suggest, if you are using it, you must be alone and you must never, never, never let anyone else handle the pendulum. I can't let you handle it, like, no. The pendulum is, it's, it's a very personalised thing. Now, you build up an affinity with the pendulum, right. <clears throat> now, before you start, if you don't believe in it, forget about it, forget about it, okay, but I do believe in it, right. Now, but what I use it mainly for is football. Now, there's three movements. If it goes clockwise, it's a home win. If it goes anti-clockwise, it's an away win. And if it, go, if it oscillates or to and fro, it means it's a draw. By the way, the Grand National on today, I have the winner, Bonanza Boy, and the second one is conclusive. Now, the first and second, right. Now, it would be quite correct for you to say, or anyone, well, if you're so smart, why can't you win the lotto? And that's what I propose doing. That would be proof that you can master something. So if I don't win the lotto, you can just say, listen, he's another phony, like, but I won't promise it next week or the week after. Are you like. OK? Yeah. And how is everything? OK, you're done. Fine. Yeah. Well, uh, 65 and 25, 80, 90. Mm -hmm. right. Mr. Kelly! Mr. Kelly! Good morning, sir. 
Okay. Fractures in the superstructure, you know, hair fractures. Yeah. <laughs> Professional the, uh, from the What Kedda. do you call it, sir? The uh, uh, lottery this week is only all this lower million. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Pretty good. What's your chances of winning? Like, this is very not slight, a... very what? slight. I never buy yeah. a ticket. Well, put, the, put these numbers down. In the old days, we used to do little woods, football pools, and a lot of the fellas would be coming in doing like this, that and the other. And then when the lottery came up then, I was carrying out uh, sort of a, like a little research and an index what numbers were coming up. And uh, you can find this all out in the lottery. Like, But I mean, used to just mess. I find then I might get one uh, minute of inspiration and I could walk up and put my hand on one. I'd use those numbers. And if I win the lottery in those numbers, I'd, have, I'd know who it was. 31. 31. And 34. 34. Yeah. That's 12. 12 lucky numbers. Right. That's, now, what would, I, I win in that. What do you expect? OK. Well, no, there you are. Are the odd 10,000, you Just see? Just 10,000. OK, Something that's tax it. Put your, name, put your name down there, Mr. O'Kelly. I'll use those numbers. P, I'll use my NASA pen. That's it. OK. <laughs> I would find that you could drop me on an island and I would adapt myself. I would do something. I think boredom can be a big thing, but no one need be bored. There's plenty of things to be doing. It was very difficult 50 years ago. Like There was, there was no opportunity for anything. <laughs> I'm very much interested now in uh, numerology and astrology and all sort of things in that field. I do think that there's there's something, you know, you, you, there's something, there must be something better than this planet anyhow, like. Well, I, I can talk to you you know, at this moment and about my son, Gregory, and that tragedy, well, on the, an operation, he didn't come through. But at this moment, I have a very definite feeling of a presence. What keeps me going into some, into the, again, as I say, that the, that when I go off of the planet, I will go into a spirit world and I will meet my son again. And I think the future of mankind could be improved 100% if people sat down for 20 minutes in the morning and be silent, be calm, and to do the same thing for 20 minutes in the evening. And I would think that people would cope better with life. Meditation, to me, has changed my life. And it teaches you tolerance, so I don't care if my next, whatever, who comes in the shop, whether they're lesbians, homosexuals, or anything. They're all just human, and that's it. And I embrace them as people. I don't mean in the, in the literal sense, like, you know, but that's it. But if you're interested in anything like mysticism or the occult or anything like that, now it doesn't necessarily mean like that he's, you're going to be a weirdy, like, but just make sure you keep your feet on the ground, get back to the, uh, I might be operating a higher planet sometime, but the next morning I have to come, I have to wait for days, I have to deliver my stuff, so I keep myself airted, like, so it doesn't do me any harm. Uh, hello, Mr. Devine, how are you? I'll show you a good trick now, you want to avoid a person, you see, so you're coming along and you're walking and you yeah. just pretend, you see, so you're walking up real slow, you're smiling and they think you're going to, and the last second you say, glad to see you, look, you're looking well, I'll bump into you again sometime and walk by, fast. <laughs> and any people who are passed over up to this stage, I think we should meet again, like, so if you have any of your friends who are yeah. gone, you might yeah. want, but then if the other hand is a disadvantage, yeah, there's a lot of bloody people you don't want to meet, like, you see, you know, so, that's, so that's why I wouldn't want to go. If heaven was there, I wouldn't want to go to heaven and to bump into all the old days I'm eating the shop, like, every day. Like, you see, the, it would drive me mental, like, and the fact that it would go on and on and on, like, so I'd prefer not to go there, like, you see. So I couldn't stand it. So, but you work out your own. I don't know, you work out your own, but I think if you are basically... Here you are, boys. Yeah, we're on. Yeah, lights. Nice. Oh, yeah. Lovely. I like to play, but it's yeah, that's very nice.
A bit of flair, that's the word. There's a good kid, yeah, flair. I'm interested in doing bits of study, and the shop was very demanding on one's time. And I found I was getting invitations to seminars, a few things in London, and bits and pieces, and I couldn't go simply because I had a shop. I said, no, look, at they're all getting ahead of me in the academic world, and I was jealous. So I said, the hell with the bloody shop, and that's it. Here I am. So I'm a, I'm a free spirit now, and I can do what I want to do. The reason we are so we are so fond of Mr. Lysett is that he represents the great truth. In appearance, he, he did not represent the uh, hard-working shopkeeper, but indeed he was. A day in the life of Mr. Lysett was a day in the life of a dynamo. You could say a million things about Mr. Lysett, but at the end of the day, the real truth about the man is that he's a terrific friend. I've lived next door to him for uh, over 20, 25 years, and in all of those years, um, he's been not only my own personal news agent, provides my own personal banking services every time I need to cash a check, but he's been a great friend and advisor on multitudinous issues. Uh, a terrific guy. We're going to miss him off the avenue. That's it, the last lock-up after 35 years. Cheerio, pleased to have met you. I just can't believe it's two years, like... Life doesn't uh, kind of stop when you stop working. You miss the company sometimes, and the fact that you have to be out at a certain time every day. But I'm beginning to enjoy not having to get up in the mornings. Yes, we don't agree on a lot of things, but we agree on that. <laughs> At this stage now, you kind of say to yourself, you go you and I go my way. The things I would be interested in, I don't think Martin would be interested in at all. And vice you know? versa. And if you have a certain amount of grit in yourself, you feel quite confident to do your own thing. Since I gave up the shop, I have created time that we can do things. The wife and I write. She does her thing, I do my thing. And so I created space. I closed the shop in 1998, but I didn't sell it. This is a, a, an escape from reality. I'm not interested in being too much on the nine to five and pension and lovey-dovey and all that sort of thing. Like, life is too short. At least make it a bit interesting. Sometimes I put more paint on me set and it falls off the sea and I, and I couldn't care less. I'm completely relaxed. It's exactly what I've been searching for, like just to have a bit of time to myself. I get personal satisfaction out of it. Like.
I can come out to a place like this and like I find and everything I see around me here I know a lot of them are from houses along the way here like there's new people in them and as soon as the skips would be I'd be poking at the skips I, I, amazed I am at the, the goods that's been thrown out although I think it's finished now everyone's onto the, now they're all onto the skips now like you see like but I like to have old things I, I, I think it's something about I like the old I can't stand like modern stuff too much like I'm sure if we brought someone in here now from um, some of the art galleries they would squirm like and they might even run out of the place like but to me it's mine anyhow they open the door before I close the shop I'd have to be in the shop for about 12 hours and I might be able to come out here for about 12 seconds You'd be dashing and dizzy, you'd be picking up a book and you'd be reading the first six pages and you'd be leaving it there, like, and... So I've more or less uh, altered that, like... I, I find now I can spend an hour here every day on my own and probably hundreds of hours of work and mucking around and... <laughs> I'm catching up my reading, like... This, now, you mightn't believe, was a fridge in the shop. So I got this brilliant idea when I thought, I'll recycle it and I'll make something out of it. Took a few measurements so a human could sit in that, like. When I do my me meditation, I sit in the fridge and I think I'm doing it twice as well as I was doing it. Born in Dublin, I have this virtual paradise on my doorstep. I haven't come across anywhere in the world to, to surpass it for beauty. At this time in my life, I couldn't imagine myself going anywhere else. The fact that I've been away at sea and round the world 29 times, like, I have an affinity with the sea. When I was 25, I just got some ideas that I wanted to see the world, and I joined the Navy, and that was the way to do it. Oh, silver. That's... Reminds me of the full silver service and the big liners in those days you had um, in the first class of course you had full silver service. And in the initial stages now I used to go around Africa and the Union Castle line so we'd go around uh, Durban, Mombasa, Cape Town. These were six week trips. Any young couple are out there now and they're lovey dovey and think, like, try and get a shop each <laughs> and have one in one shop and one in the other, and you won't have, you any, won't have time any problems to do anything <laughs> because one day runs into another. <laughs> <laughs> Looking back in retrospect, well, you know, there was a sort of an old happy atmosphere prevailing all around generally, you know, maybe, and even. It has manifested itself in the children. They all seem to go their own way, and they they all be very independent in their own way. And I suppose, like we were very independent in our own way as well. You're on your own to a great extent from the day you're born yeah. to the day you die. You're on your own, like. Well, I suppose everything that hits you hard in life, uh, you know, it does improve you. And I'm very conscious of Greg. I feel that he's there as a 
perhaps a spirit guide and uh, and whatever state he is in, whatever way he's gone, that he's happy and his happiness comes back and it's um, it rubs off on me, like. Well, over the years, it was more, I suppose, uh, contentment and, you know, uh, I suppose, saying, like, we're yeah. married and that's the way we stay, like, you know. <laughs> no. And as well as that, uh, <laughs> well, you need money to split up. <laughs> I mean, good luck. <laughs> This is the first time we've had communication. You don't know what for 20 bloody years. <laughs> you don't laugh, you better laugh. Man. And next Wednesday, the final programme in the Townland series chronicles the rise of Munster rugby captain Mick Galway to the rank of sporting legend in Fields of Gold at 7 o'clock.